think now we will move on to some basics uh, today we have two short sessions on uh, laryngoscope and thiopendon both of which are very important as far as pg examination is concerned uh, i think we'll uh, start off with uh, the first topic that will be laryngoscope which will be presented by dr nisha lasser as you know uh, a laryngoscope is the main weapon in any anesthetist armamentarium without the invent of uh, laryngoscope and uh, its various forms the specialty of anesthesia would not have come this far since chevalier jackson's uh, laryngoscope laryngoscope the types of laryngoscopes has uh, evolved a long way and uh, today we are having the luxury of having uh, video laryngoscopes fiber optic laryngoscopes and uh, what not so if dr uh, nisha is ready we will start off with uh, laryngoscopes dr nisha hello sir can you hear me yeah yeah you can proceed thank you sir good evening everyone uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, laryngoscopes A laryngoscope is a device that is used uh, to visualize larynx and adjacent structures mainly to enable endotracheal intubation. The other uses are for insertion of transesophageal echo probe, insertion of nasogastric tube, for foreign body removal in the upper airways, upper airway lesion biopsy, and visualization and assessment of upper airway. Coming to history. The first laryngoscope was invented by Manuel Garcia in 1854. Alfred Kirstein developed direct vision laryngoscope in 1895. Visualization of vocal cords for intubation was popularized by Sir Robert Macintosh and Sir Ivan Magill in the early 1940s. Coming to laryngoscopy, the procedure. Laryngoscopy is a procedure wherein the larynx is visualized. It is performed for diagnostic, therapeutic, and intubation purposes by various specialists. Here uh, is a picture that shows uh, the view of larynx uh, while doing laryngoscopy. Coming to the types of laryngoscopes, there are direct rigid laryngoscopes, indirect rigid laryngoscopes that uses uh, fiber optics, mirrors, or prisms. Then video laryngoscopes are also available now. Uh, it can be classified into rigid and flexible, then optical stylets, flexible fiber optic endoscopes. Coming to direct rigid laryngoscopes. This is the most commonly used uh, variety of laryngoscope. It is a dominant modality since uh, 1940s. R it is a rigid lighted retractor uh, su uh, such as a Macintosh laryngoscope. Uh, this one is reliant uh, on uh, retracting tissues thus creating uninterrupted line of sight between the operator and the objective, that is the uh, larynx. The advantages are it is quick to use, economical, rugged, and universally available. The, the main disadvantage is it, uh, it needs alignment of vis uh, visual. Coming to the parts of laryngoscope, a laryngoscope uh, has a handle and a blade. The blade has a uh, base, heel, the tongue, a uh, flange, web or vertical step, and uh, tip, which is also called as beak, and a light source. There is a hook on uh, for the con connection between handle and the blade. Coming to handle, it is held in hand uh, during use. It provides the power for light. It accepts blades that have a light bulb to have metallic contact, which completes an electrical circuit when the handle and blade are in working position. Handles containing batteries or using fiber optic illumination, it contains halogen lamp bulb. Handle is fitted with a hinge pin, which fits into the slot on the base of the blade. Uh, the handle uh, is available in different sizes. It has a rough surface for better grip. Uh, disposable handles are also available now. 
The examples are pen light, uh, stubby, and mini handles. Uh, when when should we use short handles? It is used uh, for patients in whom chest or breast co uh, contact the handle during use, or when quicoid pressure is being applied, or when patient is in body cast. Suppose the short handles are not available, then uh, we can go for other techniques such as uh, inserting the blade laterally into mouth, then advance and rotate it until it is in a midline position, or we can detach the blade from the handle, then insert the blade into mouth and then reattach the handle to the blade. There is another type of handle that is patel Syracuse handle, which can be positioned and locked in four different positions, such as 45 degree, 90 degree, 135 degree and 180 degrees. This is the picture of a blade. Uh, here we can see the base of the blade. Uh, the end of base is uh, called as heel. There is a lock in the base. And this is the web or vertical step. Here we can see the tongue, the tip, the light, and the flange. Coming to the blade. It is a component that is inserted into mouth. Base, it attaches to the handle. Uh, it has a slot for engaging the hinge pin of the handle. The end of base is called as heel. Coming to the tongue, which is also called as spatula, it is the main shaft. It compresses and manipulates the soft tissues and lower jaw. The long axis of tongue may be straight or curved. The straight blade uh, helps in better laryngeal visualization. Curved blade uh, helps in easier intubation. It has a flange which projects off the side of tongue and is connected to the tongue by the web. It guides instrumentation and it deflects the tissues from the line of vision. It determines the cross-sectional shape of the blade. The tip, which is also called as beak, contacts either the epiglottis or the vallicula and directly or indirectly elevates the epiglottis. The tip is thickened and transversely beaded to minimize uh, tissue damage, that's mucosal damage. Um, different sizes of laryngoscope blades which is available, uh, 00, 00 is used for premature infants, 0 for neonates. Most commonly used are a 3 and 4 size blades for adults. The types of blades, uh, the most commonly used one is Macintosh which is also called as curved blade. Uh, its size ranges from 1 to 4. The tongue has a ge uh, gentle curve that extends uh, to the tip. In the cross-sectional view, the tongue, web, and flange forms a reverse Z shape. Uh, the blade tip is positioned in the vallicula anterior to the epiglottis, and it lifts, uh, lifts the epi epiglottis uh, out of the line of sight. Um, McIntosh, in, uh, McIntosh laryngoscope, uh, while using it, uh, the, uh, the greater cervical spine movement is needed. Uh, here we can see the reverse Z shape, uh, cross-sectional shape. <coughs> reverse Z shape. Uh, coming to the modifications of McIntosh laryngoscope, there are several uh, modifications. Uh, the most common ones, uh, the common ones uh, mm -hmm. we need to know are left-handed laryngoscope, McIntosh uh, blade. Here the flange is on the opposite side. It is used for abnormalities of right side of face or oropharynx uh, in uh, left-handed intubators, then intubating in right lateral position, then positioning the tracheal tube directly on the left side of mouth. Then modified English Macintosh. Here the flange is curved and lower at the handle end. The reduced, fl uh, redu the flange is reduced uh, to decrease the pressure on maxillary incisors. Coming to polio blade, the blade is offset from the handle uh, at an obtuse angle. It allows intubation in iron lung respirators and body jackets. In obese patients, uh, in uh, breast hypertrophy, kyphosis with uh, severe barrel chest deformity. In short neck uh, patients, in uh, patients with restricted neck mobility. The main disadvantage is uh, less uh, control uh, by the 
use up, then only little force can be applied. Coming to flexible tip blades, uh, that uh, that is McCoy blade. Here the here we have a hinged tip that can that is controlled by a lever which is attached to the proximal end of the blade. When the lever is pushed towards the handle, uh, the tip uh, of the blade is flexed. <coughs> Uh, McCoy blade helps in increased view of larynx. There is only less force required to intubate and there is a decreased risk of patient trauma. It helps in difficult intubation scenarios. Coming to Miller blade, which is also called as straight blade. The tongue is straight with a slight upward curve near the tip. The flange, web and tongue form a C with the top fatten. The lamp socket on either the web or on the tongue. It is positioned, uh, the blade is, po in Miller blade is positioned uh, posterior to the epiglottis, uh, trapping it while exposing the glottis. Its size ranges from zero to four. The modifications are Oxyport Miller blade, Wisconsin blade, Sivard blade, and Oxford infant blade. Uh, here you can see the cross-sectional C shape of the Miller blade. This is the usable length of the blade. Coming to techniques of laryngoscopy, uh, we should op uh, initially optimize the position of the patient head uh, in the sniffing position. That is 25 degree flexion of lower cervical spine and 85 to 90 degree head extension at atlanto occipital joint using pillow of uh, 8 to 10 centimeter height uh, under the head. Uh, in uh, children less than eight years of age, no head elevation is needed. <clears throat> By doing this, uh, we align the oral, pharyngeal, and laryngeal axis. The laryngoscope is held in left hand at the junction of handle and blade. Uh, optimum opening of mouth with a thumb over index finger. Uh, that is called a scissoring action. Uh, this is done by the right hand. Introduce the blade into mouth from right side without engaging lips and teeth. When the half of, uh, of the blade enters the oral cavity, sweep the tongue to the left. Then advance the blade along the side of tongue towards right tonsillar fossa. When uh, the fossa is visualized, blade tip is moved to the midline. Advancing blade behind the base of the tongue, elevate it. Uh, we can see the epiglottis. From here, we have two, uh, two different techniques, uh, one for curved blades and other for straight blades. For curved blade, that is Macintosh blade, it is advanced until the blade of tip fits into the valicula. Uh, we then apply the uh, apply traction along the axis of handle, moves the base of tongue and epiglottis forwards and glottis comes into view. For straight blades, the blade is advanced, epiglottis is identified. The blade tip is passed posterior to the epiglottis. Then blade is fitted anteriorly, elevating the epiglottis directly and uh, glottis comes into view. The traction force should be along the laryngoscope handle and approximately 25 to 40 Newtons. In difficult laryngoscopy, we, we can increase the uh, traction to 50 to 70 Newtons. Never use the blade as a lever and teeth as fulcrum. This will lead to uh, trauma of maxillary teeth. Manuals to improve laryngoscopic view. Uh, birth maneuver, uh, that is external backward, upward and rightward pressure on the thyroid cartilage to improve visualization of lotus. Other one is external laryngeal manipulation. Coming to indirect laryngoscopes, uh, the first one, uh, the, the one we are discussing here is Bullard laryngoscope. It is an indirect rigid fiber optic laryngoscope. It uses rigid, it is a rigid metal shape which follows the contour of oropharynx and epiglottis. There is a working channel which extends from the scope 
scope body to the point where light bundles end at the tip. It can be used for suction, oxygen insufflation, administration of local anesthetics or saline, or passage of an airway exchange or jet ventilation catheter. The three sizes are available for pediatric, pediatric long, and adult. The, uh, the introducing or intubating stylet. It is used to facilitate passage of tracheal tube into the laryngeal inlet. There is a multifunctional stylet. It has a hollow core that can serve as a, as a guide for flexible fibroscope, tracheal tube exchanger, intratracheal catheter, or small catheter. It is used to inst instill local anesthetic into the trachea. Uh, advantages of bullard laryngoscope in uh, difficult life threatening conditions such as uh, cervical spine fracture, upper body burns, and stroma in patients with temporomandibular joint immobility, then congenital airway problems such as Pierre Robin syndrome, then for rapidity of intubation, uh, low risk of failed, uh, failed intubation or trauma to lips and teeth. It causes less discomfort. Disadvantages are it requires experience and maintenance of skills. The tracheal tube larger than 7.5 millimeter may cause the introducing stylet to be displaced posteriorly, which may make intubation more difficult. The intubation may take a slightly longer time. The indications are predicted difficult intubation, failed routine intubation, unstable cervical spine, which requires minimal cervical movement, the contraindications are blood and secretions in upper airway, distorted upper airway anatomy, upper airway obstruction due to foreign body. Coming to video laryngoscopes. New generation, it is, a, it is the new generation method of laryngoscopy and tracheal intubation. Uh, we can see the images from distal end of laryngoscope blade, uh, which is carried onto the screen that is either attached to the handle, for example, McGrath laryngoscope, video laryngoscope, or it can be carried uh, by the optical cable, cable that is Glidescope, CMAC, and TrueView. The advantages of video laryngoscopes are, it provides superior visualization and magnified view of glottic structures. There, uh, we need lesser mouth opening and neck, neck extension. It is helpful in intubation of patients with difficult airway. Uh, the operator and uh, assistant both can see the same view and coordinate better. Uh, and it will be easy to learn and enhance laryngoscopy teaching to beginners. Uh, uh, we are here we are discussing about uh, Glidescope, AirTrack, and CMAC. Glidescope, it incorporates a high-resolution digital camera connected by a video cable to a high-resolution LCD monitor. Uh, there is a steep 60 degree angulation, uh, reduced overall thickness of 14 millimeter of its blade improves the view of glottis. It has embedded anti-fogging mechanism. It is used for tracheal intubation to provide controlled mechanical ventilation uh, and to use for removal of foreign bodies from the airway. Can be used in both anesthetized and awake patients with difficult airways. The latest version is co cobalt, which uses disposable blade. Coming to air track video laryngoscope. It consists of a curved blade with two channels. One channel is anatomically shaped and appropriate size tube can be pre-mounted on it. The other channel contains series of lenses, prisms and mirrors that transfer image from illuminated tip uh, to a proximal viewfinder. Uh, here we can get good, good quality view of glottis adjacent structures and tip of endotracheal tube without need of aligning the three airway axis. It will not obstruct view of vocal cords during the act of laryngoscopy. It can be used for both routine and difficult airways. Coming to CMAC video laryngoscope, it gives us clear image uh, without fogging. It can also record still images and video sequences on SD memory card. The blade is flattened and round edges. Uh, it has round edges. Uh, so, and it will be, it is uh, useful in case of reduced oral aperture and less damage to teeth and soft tissue. There is no need of stalact. Coming to cleaning of rigid laryngoscope. First, we should remove the batteries, clean the handle with water and detergent, then with alcohol. Handle can be sterilized by using steam, plasma, or gas. 
Then rinse the blade with water and enzymatic detergent using a soft brush. The blade can be sterilized by ETO, steam, plasma, or liquid chemical. Then disposable covers for handle and blades are also available. Disposable handles and blades are also available. Uh, the complications of laryngoscopy are uh, uh, more common. Common complications are dental injury, uh, that is damage to teeth, gum, or dental prosthesis. Then there can be minor bleeding. Then uh, cervical spinal cord injury, lingual or hypoglossal nerve injury, arytenoid dislocation, subluxation, temporomandibular joint dislocation, laceration such as esophageal, laryngeal, or uh, pharyngeal. Uh, then uh, Swallowing or aspiration of a foreign body can also occur. The laryngoscope can malfunction. There can be circulatory changes such as tachycardia or hypertension due to the stress response. And uh, there can be disease transmission. Infectious disease transmission can also occur. Thank you. Dr. Sunny, you will have to unmute, unmute, Sunny. Yeah. Can you hear now? Yes. Yeah. Now you are audible. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nisha, for that uh, presentation on laryngoscopes. Uh, a few questions. Um, can you tell me what is the main advantage of uh, the newer laryngoscopes over the conventional direct laryngoscopes? Um, we need a lesser cervical spine movement. Um, both the assistant and uh, the intubator can uh, see the view of uh, glottis. Uh, so uh, we can be uh, coordinate better. Um, so the, the main advantage is it allows laryngoscopy and intubation in positions other than the sniffing position. Sniffing position. So your uh, oropharyngotracheal alignment is not very much essential yes, when you use a video laryngoscope. Yes. Okay. Can you mention a few situations where uh, you will prefer a straight blade? For example, your Miller blade. Any few uh, conditions or situations where you will prefer a Miller blade over a Macintosh blade? Mm -hmm. In children, uh, which uh, in blade children, you will prefer? Miller blade. Yeah, yeah. Miller blade uh, you will prefer in children, uh, in micrognathia, and uh, in uh, situations where there is short uh, mandible hyoid distance, and when there is uh, prominent upper incisors, you can you usually uh, you prefer straight, blade. straight, straight blade. blade. Uh, why? Why straight blades are not uh, preferred in adults? It is preferred only in children. That is because the anterior blades, lines. Uh, they have smaller displacement volumes, and in conditions where there are there is smaller displacement spaces, you prefer a straight, straight blade. Okay. And uh, tongue control is better with a Macintosh blade. That is why we prefer a Macintosh blade in adults. Okay. So you were talking about uh, with the video laryngoscope. So I think you have covered almost all the types of video laryngoscope. Can you tell me how do you classify video laryngoscopes? Um, flexible and rigid. Uh, the video laryngoscopes, I think you have already mentioned that in your presentations. F flexible and rigid. Uh, any other uh, way to classify it? The Newer ones which we use now, the popular ones, your air track. CMAC and air track. Yeah, yeah. So what is the difference between a CMAC and an air track? In uh, uh, intubating a track for intubation. Yeah, that is channeled. Channel for so intubation. Your, your air track is a channeled video laryngoscope. Whereas the others are your glide CMAC scope, is. CMAC, CMAC, your McGrath, all those are non-channel video laryngoscope. Okay. Uh, what is the complication you expect when you do uh, intubation with the glide scope? 
Uh, it is said that the pharyngeal injuries are uh, very common with glide scope if you are mm -hmm. not an expert because you are using a rigid stillet. So yes. whenever you are using a video laryngoscope, it is not that you should always uh, be looking at the monitor. Once you get a good view of your uh, larynx, uh, larynx inlet, then you have to look into the mouth when you are putting the tube. Because from the point you are introducing the tube, until you see the tip of the tube in the monitor, it is a blind spot. So that at that point, you can have a lot of injuries. So you have to look into the mouth during the insertion of the tube. And yeah. once the tip of the tube is seen in the monitor, then you can do your visual. Monitor. Yeah, you can look at the monitor and do the division. So light scope is also not uh, devoid of uh, complications. It can also cause complications. Uh, you are telling about the blood laryngoscope. What are the sizes available in uh, blood laryngoscope? Um, pediatric, uh, pediatric, uh, long, and adult. Very good. In adult, it is uh, it is used in more than 10 years. Pediatric, up to 2 years. And yes. pediatric long, between 2 to 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. And uh, what is the advantage? Blood laryngoscope, it requires minimal mouth opening. Minimal mouth opening. As less as 0 0.6, said 0 0.64 centimeter in the cephalocaudal axis is enough. Uh so I think uh, you have covered most of the uh, laryngoscopes. Uh, seniors, uh, if anybody wants to add anything, kindly do so. One question is there in the chat box. Someone asked about a RAN, Rapid Airway Management Positioner. Look, Sunny. Dr. Binil, Dr. Binil. Yes, Dr. sir. Binil. Yes, sir. See, we have to congratulate uh, Dr. Nisha. Hello. You are audible, sir. You are yeah, audible. audible. Yeah, we have to congratulate Dr. Nisha because uh, she has given all the parameters about uh, laryngoscope. Definitely, she has covered the full basics. Again, our people will ask these questions. So what is the RAM position? <laughs> Even though it is not concerned with the proper laryngoscopy instrument. Anyway, just because I have asked in difficult laryngoscopy, especially in obese patients, you have to keep the pillows just like a step so that the neck will not interfere and the pendulous breasts will not interfere with the laryngoscopy. So step by step, you have to keep the pillows so that the patient will be kept in the slanting position so that the laryngeopharyngeal tracheal axis will be in the straight line. That is the RAM position. But again, I congratulate Dr. Nisha has taken so much of a pain to cover the entire basics. And even with the more experienced anesthesiologists will find some new points in the laryngoscopy design and everything. She has covered yes. everything. I congratulate you. Thank you, sir. If there are uh, no more questions, I think we can uh, go on to the next topic. Dr. Binil, shall I? Hello? Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Yes, yes Sunny, please proceed. Yeah, next uh, uh, topic, sorry, talk will be on Tyopendon. It is a drug, uh, as you know, uh, which you, was used to be the most widely used and mainstay induction agent of choice in anesthesia practice until it was replaced by propofol. And uh, with both anesthetic and non-anesthetic uses, uh, Tyopendon is unique. Of course, as with any other drugs, uh, it needs caution or uh, is contraindicated in certain specific situations. Uh, but unfortunately, I think uh, the present uh, generation anesthetists very hardly use it. And uh, many of our junior uh, postgraduates have not seen it or have not used it. So. I uh, uh, request Dr. Nirmal to show some light on uh, Pyopendone. Dr. Nirmal? Uh, 
Good evening, sir. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Can you? You can proceed. Okay, sir. Uh, today we are discussing about uh, the, the drug thiopendone. As we all know, uh, thiopendone comes under the class uh, as a common uh, intravenous induction agent. Uh, comes under the class barbiturates. Uh, Brief about the history, um, barbiturates were discovered in the early 20th century. The first barbiturate cause uh, loss of consciousness within one arm brain circulation time was uh, hexobarbital. Thiopendon <clears throat> uh, was introduced clinically by Waters and Lundy in 1934. Uh, and become clinically preferred induction agent because of its rapid onset of action and short duration. Uh, Thiopendone also referred to as thiopendal and pendothal. Next about the physicochemical characteristics of thiopendone. Uh, barbiturates are defined as any drug derived from barbituric acid. Uh, barbituric acid lacks uh, central nervous system activity. It's a cyclic compound obtained by the combination of urea and malonic acid. Uh, barbiturates with the sedative and hypnotic properties results from the substitution of hydrogen attached to the carbon atom in the position fifth with the alkyl or uh, aryl groups. <clears throat> the two major class of barbiturates are oxybarbiturates and thiobarbiturates uh, with either an oxygen at position two or with the sulfur in the second position respectively. Uh, thiobarbiturates include thiopendal and thiamylal and oxybarbiturates methohexital. It's a common uh, induction agents under the class barbiturates. It's a picture showing the structures of uh, common barbiturate induction agents. As uh, here we can see uh, the second position in the thiopendone is replaced with the sulfur atom and uh, retain the oxygen atom in case of methoxyter. That is uh, which retain the oxygen atom at the number two carbon of the barbituric acid ring are designated by oxybarbiturates. Uh, replacement of this oxygen atom with sulfur atom results in thiobarbiturates, which is more lipid soluble. Also, uh, the substitution of uh, at the uh, fifth position with the phenyl group produces the anticonversant activity to the uh, barbiturates. Next, about the formulations. Uh, Thiopendol is supplied as a hygroscopic pale yellow powder, uh, while commonly contain 500 milligram of sodium thiopendol with. 6% uh, is sodium carbonate in an inert atmosphere of nitrogen. It is reconstituted with a 20 ml of sterile water. Uh, this yields a 2.5% solution. Each ml contains 25 mg, the pH of 10.6 to 10.8. This alkaline solution is bacteriostatic and safe to keep for uh, 48 hours. <coughs> Except for the pharmacodynamics. So, metabolism. Uh, uh, Thiopenone exclusively undergoes hepatic metabolism. Uh, metabolites are almost all inactive, water soluble, and excreted in dewey. The barbiturates are transformed by uh, four processes. Uh, first one, uh, oxidation of the aryl or alkyl uh, or phenyl uh, moiety at its fifth position, and dealkylation, uh, desulfuration of the thiobarbiturates at second position, and destruction of the barbituric acid ring. Uh, the thiopendol is 65 to 85 percentage protein bound in plasma, so the metabolism is slow. In the usual induction doses, that is 45 milligram per kg, uh, thiopendol exhibits a first order kinetics, that is, a constant fraction of drug is cleared from the body per unit type. However, at very high doses of thiopendol or infusion doses with the receptor saturation, uh, zero order kinetics occurs, that is, a constant amount of the drug is cleared per unit type, which leads to accumulation of the active drug and delayed recovery. As I earlier said, the metabolites are inactive and easily uh, excreted through urine. It's metabolized in the liver to hydroxy thiopenda and the carboxylic acid derivative, which are more water soluble and have little uh, central nervous system activity. When high doses of thiopenda are administered, uh, desulfuration reaction occurs with the production of pendobarbital, which has long lasting CNS depressant activity. The low elimination clearance of thiopenda contributes to a long elimination half life of about 11 to 12 hours. The volume of distribution is slightly larger in female patients, posing a longer elimination half-life. Uh, pregnancy also increases the volume of distribution of thiopendol, uh, 
uh, prolonging the elimination half life. Uh, because of its lipophilicity, relatively large volume of distribution, and low rate of hepatic clearance, thiopentol can accumulate in tissues, especially if given in large doses over a prolonged period. The hepatic enzyme induction by barbiturates like uh, cytochrome P450 is the reason that they are now recommended for administration to patients with acute intermittent porphyria. Uh, barbiturates may precipitate an attack by stimulating amino levulinic acid synthesis the enzyme, which is responsible for the production of porphyrins. So the mechanism of action, and the effects of uh, barbiturates on the central nervous system are being grouped into two categories. First, the enhancement of synaptic actions of inhibitory neurotransmitters. Second one, the blockade of synaptic action of excitatory neurotransmitters. So you all know uh, GABA receptor is the only site proven to be involved in barbiturates induced anesthesia. <laughs> the GABA receptor, uh, it is a uh, chloride channel composed of uh, five subunits. Uh, when there is the GABA receptors are activated, uh, this transmembrane chloride conductance increases, resulting in the hyperpolarization of the uh, postsynaptic cell membrane, and there is functional inhibition of postsynaptic neurons. The ability of barbiturates to uniquely depress the reticular activating system, which is presumed to be important in the maintenance of wakefulness. At low concentrations, barbiturates enhance the effect of GABA. This enhancement of the action of GABA is likely responsible for the uh, sedative hypnotic effects of the barbiturates. At larger concentrations, the barbiturates activate the chloride channels directly. This GABA mimetic effect at a slightly high concentration may be responsible for what is termed as a barbiturate anesthesia. And the second mechanism of action of barbiturates involves the inhibition of the synaptic transmission of excitatory neurotransmitters, glutamate and acetylcholine. The actions of the barbiturates to block excitatory uh, sinus transmission are specific for synaptic ion channels. Uh, Thiopentol may exert GABA independent effects on the glutaminergic NMD system. Next, the effect on cerebral metabolism. A dose related depression of uh, cerebral metabolic oxygen consumption rate, and it progressively slows the electroencephalogram reduces the rate of ATP consumption and enhances protection from partial cerebral ischemia. Uh, with the reduction in cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen consumption, uh, there is parallel reduction in cerebral perfusion, uh, which is seen in decreased cerebral blood flow and intracranial pressure. The ratio of cerebral blood flow to cerebral metabolic oxygen rate remains unchanged. Even though the mean arterial pressure decreases, barbiturates do not compromise the overall cerebral perfusion pressure. That is, uh, barbiturates maintains the cerebral perfusion pressure. So effects on the central nervous system is highly uh, lipid soluble and there is low degree of ionization can cross the blood brain barrier rapidly. So it can uh, have fast onset of action. The final factor governing the rapidity of drug penetration to the blood brain barrier is the plasma drug concentration, which depends upon and the dose of administration and the rate of administration. To produce a uh, dose-related depression of cerebral metabolic rate and cerebral blood flow, thereby lowering uh, intracranial pressure. To do not compromise overall cerebral perfusion pressure, uh, neuroprotective properties are secondary to their ability to decrease oxygen demand. It's a potent anticonvulsant activity. Uh, continuous infusion of thiopental have been used to treat uh, refractory status epilepticus. So effects on the cardiovascular system. The primary cardiovascular effect of induction is uh, peripheral vasodilatation that results in a pooling of blood in the venous system. A decrease in contractility is another effect which is related to reduce availability of calcium to the myofibrils. The mechanism by which uh, cardiac output is decreased with the thiopendone single load, there is a direct negative inotropic action due to, uh, due to decreased entry of calcium ions. Second one, decreased ventricular filling owing to increased capacitance of the vessels. Third, uh, transiently decreases sympathetic outflow from the central nervous system. And there is significant decrease in the arterial blood pressure. And there is a reflex tachycardia. It's a uh, 10 to 36 percent increase in the heart rate that accompanies thiopental administration probably results from uh, it's the baroreceptor mediated synaptic reflex stimulation of the heart in response to the decreased out uh, cardiac output and arterial pressure. The cardiac index as well as the mean arterial pressure is unchanged or reduced. 
Uh, hemodynamic changes are uh, depend upon the infusion rate of the thigh pond. Therefore, it should be avoided in hypovolemic patients. Next, about the effects on the respiratory system. Uh, there is a dose-related respiratory depression. Uh, the usual ventilatory pattern with the thigh pond induction is known as the double apnea. Uh, there is a transient apnea after the drug administration for induction. Uh, the duration of apnea is short, uh, lasting for about only 25 seconds. Uh, the initial ap apnea that occurs during the administration lasts for a few seconds, succeeded by a, a few breaths of, of reasonably adequate tidal volume, which is followed by a lengthier apneic period. It's known as the double apnea. Therefore, during induction of anesthesia with thiopendone, ventilation must be assisted or controlled to provide adequate respiratory exchange. The other effects of thiopendone groups in about 40% patients is a garlic or onion taste allergic reactions uh, in local tissue irritation, tissue necrosis, sex devastation of the thiopendone, uh, transient apical rash, uh, bronchospasm, and anaphylax. Uh, special concern about thiopendone is the accidentally intraarterial injection of thiopendone. The clinical signs of intraarterial injection include a white or cyanose patch due to arterial spasm and thrombosis, skin discoloration and ulceration or blistering, and edema of the forearm or patch the site of injection. It's because uh, thiopendone is a strong alkaline irritant, the pH of 10.8, as a 2.5 percentage solution. When injected into an artery, uh, crystals of thiopendone will precipitate due to changes in pH, especially with the blood, may eventually block small arterial and capillary vessels. The crystals themselves lead to local release of noradrenaline with a subsequent vasospasm and thrombosis. Uh, treatment include, uh, depend on the volume and concentration of thiopendone injected. Uh, consider uh, as a medical emergency, discontinuing surgery. As, uh, steps include, first, uh, the cannula should be left in the artery. It's a saline flush to dilute the drug. And keep the limb elevated to uh, facilitate the venous return. And next step is the anticoagulant therapy. A small dose of heparin may be injected into the arterial cannula. Uh, together with the, uh, preferably procaine, a 10 to 20 ml of 0.5% uh, percentage solution for vasodilatation. Uh, other drugs can be used as fendolamine, it's an alpha blocking agent, and papaverin 40 to 80 mg. Papaverin and procaine have also infiltrated around the exposed artery. To ensure maximal vasodilatation, uh, definitive treatment as a uh, cervical uh, sympathetic block or a brachial plexus block should always be done. The most direct and immediate method of obtaining vasodilatation is general anesthesia with volatile anesthetic agents. So the uses of thiopendone. Uh, barbiturates are used clinically for induction, maintenance of anesthesia, and for pre-medication. Uh, induction of anesthesia usually heralded by the loss of eyelash reflux. Hello. 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 Continue. Continue. Normally, you can continue. You can continue. Uh, Thiopendol advantages. Uh, prompt onset of action, 15 to 30 seconds, and there is smooth induction or advantages of thiopendone. The rapid emergence, particularly after a uh, single use of induction, to maintain the general anesthesia because repeated doses reliably sustain unconsciousness and contribute to amnesia. In the dose of thiopendone, the usual induction dose is uh, 3 to 5 milligram per kilogram in adults. In children, uh, slightly uh, higher dose due to increase the volume distribution, 5 to 6 milligram per kg in children, and 6 to 8 milligram per kilogram in infants. The intravenous maintenance dose is uh, 50 to 100 milligram every uh, 10 to 12 minutes. For the treatment of status epilepticus, mm. it's a balls dose of uh, 3 to 5 milligram per kilogram, followed by infusion of 3 to 5 milligram per kilogram per hour. Uh, in case of neurosurgery to protect ischemic brain, uh, balls dose of 3 milligram per kilogram followed by infusion of 5 to 6 milligram per kilogram per hour. Contraindication to thiopendone uh, when there is a respiratory obstruction uh, or in case of an inadequate airway because uh, thiopendone may worsen respiratory depression. And second, in case of uh, severe cardiovascular instability or in hypovolemia. Third, in status asthmaticus, condition in which air, uh, airway control and ventilation may be worsened further by thiopendone. Fourth condition is porphyria, 
this may be precipitated by thiopentone. And also without proper induction equipment and airway equipment, a thiopentone should not be administered. The side effects of thiopentone, uh, as we earlier said, hypotension, if thiopentone is administered to hypovolemic or shock patients, uh, respiratory depression when excess loss are used, laryngospasm, bronchospasm, unusual but may be precipitated in asthmatic patients. And last about the allergic reaction uh, from cutaneous rashes to severe anaphylactic shock with cardiovascular prolapse. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Nirmal, for that uh, this presentation. A uh, few clarifications. Uh, can you tell me why this six uh, percent uh, sodium carbonate is added in typeridone vials? Uh, sodium carbonate is added as a preservative uh, to prevent uh, the oxidation, and uh, along with the atmospheric nitrogen, uh, it uh, keeps the alkaline medium and prevents the precipitation. Yeah, it will prevent the precipitation of the uh, insoluble thiobarbituric acid. Right. Now, uh, what happens to the intraocular pressure when you give thiopendone? Uh, What's the effect of thiopendone on uh, intraocular pressure? Uh, initially, uh, thiopendone may uh, decrease the intraocular pressure. Uh, but with the administration of uh, uh, Tracheal intubation, it may increase uh, more than that of proper food. It is when, in, when you use choline along with that. Okay. Ipendron acid decreases the intraocular pressure. So sure. you can uh, administer it for patients with glaucoma, penetrating eye injury, corneal ulcer, decimetosil, all those things. Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me, what is the end point of uh, your induction dose of anesthesia with? Thiopendone and propofol. Are usual questions? Uh, Thiopendone, uh, the response uh, loss of eyelash reflex as compared means uh, in case of uh, propofol, uh, it's a loss of verbal commands. Yeah, so it will be the loss of verbal commands. Okay. Uh, can you tell me uh, a few reasons for uh, the clinical occurrence of an unconscious mother but an awake neonate when you use thiopendone in pregnancy? The, uh, rap um, the rapid distribution, uh, redistribution of the breath in the mother. Is that the main first reason? Uh, the rapid uptake in the neonates, hepatic, hepatic uptake. Yeah, the preferential uptake of thiopendone by the fetal liver. Why? Because? Why liver? Because uh, it is the first organ perfused by the blood coming from the umbilical vein. Okay. That is one reason. Okay. Then uh, the other answer, reason? Uh, the relatively uh, high water content of the brain. Yeah. The neonates, the fetal brain has uh, relatively higher water content. Okay. Then, as you said, uh, rapid redistribution of the drug uh, into the maternal tissues. Then uh, also that uh, there will be dilution in the fetal circulation. These are the reasons why when you use thiopendone in pregnancy, you can you will create an unconscious mother, but the but an awake neonate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one question from historical of uh, question of historical importance. Can you relate thiopendone to World War II? Why was uh, thiopendone uh, famous? Not famous, uh, rather infamous uh, during World War II. Anti-rocket mm. uh, During the Pearl Harbor attack, uh, the wounded uh, soldiers were uh, who were already hypovolemic. They were given this uh, newly introduced anesthetic agent that was rapidly administered. So as you said, in a hypovolemic patient, if you give thiopendone, they will land up in shock. So in Pearl Harbor, many of the soldiers landed up in shock when they were given thiopendone. That is a uh, historical importance of type. Um, so, so I think that is okay. Uh, Meenakshi Sundaram, sir, any points to add? Rajesh, sir. Uh, Dr. Sunny, both uh, your postgraduates presented well. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
and uh, yeah they, they are presented well actually nothing more to add they have uh, even described the minute points also and uh, he has uh, uh, one stock question here uh, which he used to ask uh, when we are postgraduates is that uh, uh, like a 16 year old uh, girl coming to casualty with acute abdominal pain so if you are if you are not able to distinguish between any porphyric attack or an appendicectomy pain should not use it though a rare condition And what's the one arm ring circulation time for the appendon? Yes. Okay. Normal? Uh, 15 to 20 seconds. Okay. okay. Thank you. Fifteen to twenty seconds or even less? 15. It's less than that. It is less than that. It's around nine to eleven oh, seconds. No. Yes, nine to eleven seconds. That is the main difference between when we compare it with the proper form. Okay, sir. And there? Uh, any more questions? Any more uh, comments from the audience? Anything else, madam, to add? <laughs> 